Hey everyone, welcome back to Lovely Lavender Wishes. It's Renee and I hope you're having a very blessed day today. Um, we are continuing on in Isaiah. Um, we're going to be doing a Bibling page today on, Bible journaling page today on Isaiah 63 verses 7 and on, or mostly, mostly verse 7 I guess. Um, I got a bunch of these images in Happy Mail. Um, I got these and this napkin, count your blessings, and this little tag. So I got it from um, some ladies from my uh, Facebook group I'm in called um, God is Within Her Bible Journaling. So check it out. God is Within Her Bible Journaling. And um, I wanted to use these blessings that I got. So it's appropriate that it this... Um, this page will be called Count Your Blessings because I'm going to use the napkin that they gave me. Count Your Blessings and all this is blessings and little flowers. I had these two tags. These are from um, probably like those life, uh, I forgot what they're called, but you know where you, you record your life and daily things. Um, I bought a whole set and I had a whole bunch of these like little journal cards. So I'm going to be using those and this little tag that I, all this I got in Happy Mail and the napkin. Um, Happy Mail, for those who aren't familiar, it's just when you bless other people, you send them things through the mail. Um, so if you want to ever do that, um, I do it often. I go through my stash and send out Happy Mail to people. And you just never know how it'll bless someone's day. So talking about blessing someone's day, we are going to be focusing on counting your blessings today. So... The verse is verse seven. It says, it's a remembrance of grace. It says, um, it's the end of Isaiah, towards the end of Isaiah. And it says, I will make known the Lord's faithful love and the Lord's praiseworthy acts because all of the Lord has done for us, even the many good things he has done for the house of Israel, which he did for them based on his compassion and the abundance of his faithful love. So it's about making known the what the Lord has done for you and just remembering the blessings. Like this is, after all of this judgment that the people have been going through, because Isaiah has been warning the people, the, the Lord told Isaiah to warn the people about what's going to happen because they disobeyed and it kept going on. But throughout the whole book, there's like this um, positive string that goes through saying, you know, the remnant, there's always going to be a remnant. God will always be faithful. God is always going to show himself true. God is going to bring you back to Zion, you know, back to Jerusalem. Um, he's going to bring the people back and he's always going to remember his people. He's never going to leave his people. Um, so he says, they are indeed my people, children who will not be disloyal. And he became their savior. So it says, in all their suffering, he suffered. So it's like he, he, he redeemed them because of his love and compassion. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of the past. So it's just, you know, kind of saying how the God is always there. And it says he remembered the days of the past, the days of Moses and his people. So this is all about just remembering, remembering all the blessings that God has done for you. So let me move all of this. And so we will be counting our blessings today. Let me see, move this, move this. Okay, so I am going to work on some stenciling first. And one of the tricks I have is I take some transparent tape. If you have a stencil like this where you don't want um, certain areas to be stenciled, like I don't want this word lost. I just want the numbers, these numbers right here. Whoops. I taped over the numbers. You don't want to tape over what you want. But this is just like a quick little way to kind of make sure you don't, um, go, you know, get parts that you don't want. Should have made that a little longer. So I just want these numbers here, probably these numbers up here. So I'm going to mask off this part right here. And this word right here. So this is kind of just my quick way of making sure that I'll just get the sections that I want. Is that all I want? I think so. I think I might want these numbers. So I'm going to cut this. Where's my scissors? I lost my scissors, y'all. My desk is just, here we go. My desk is crazy. I'm working on this um, Renaissance journal. And so I've got I'm trying to work within like a little two um, 
foot area here, not even, <laughs> maybe a foot and a foot. Um, Cause I just, everything is piled high on my desk. I don't even want to show it to y'all cause it's just a disaster. I need my phone. Okay, if you're careful and you do this correctly, you shouldn't have the problem I'm having. Y'all know I always have these issues. I just want this, these numbers open too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So since my napkin has got these colors, it's like browns, dark browns, greenishes, oranges, yellows, that kind of thing. I am going to put this one to the side. use um, wild honey, brushed corduroy, which is a brown, and then this rusty hinge, which is more of an orange. So I'm gonna move all this. And so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use these big stencils. So it's about counting your blessings. So I'm just going to stencil in just some various numbers on the page, just haphazardly, randomly. You know, I love these like antique type, um, not antique, but I don't know. They've got like, it looks like they're kind of falling apart, rustic numbers. And I'm going to mix, which I know probably drives some of y'all crazy, but I'm gonna mix some of these colors because I want like browns, oranges, I want some faded colors. And there's no rhyme or reason, I am just Just, I don't know, randomly putting numbers. Um, so I have a plastic under here. I did prep my page because I am using inks. I always prep my page when I use inks, just in case, just never know. Um, let's see. And let's just have something kind of sticking down from there. That might get covered from some napkins that I'm gonna put on. That should be good, just some numbers, actually. Let's have like a little five peeking out. I barely see that. It's kind of hard here in the crease. Let's see if I can lift this up a little bit and stencil at the same time. Hold my, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so we got that. Let me move that to the side. And then I, since I have my colors out, I wanted to stencil some of these numbers. So let's put this here. Some of these numbers down this side. I'm gonna do a little mix of brown and this orange. I'm gonna put some there, ooh, sticking. Ooh, I love that, love, love, love. Let's see. Some coming off the page up here. Ooh, yeah, cool. And you never know what's gonna happen until you lift the stencil up and that's like, oh wow, <laughs> so cool. Okay, I think I'm gonna do that on the page too. I think I want some of these smaller numbers down here. Let's do brown. I'm gonna kind of have them fading out like that, ooh, cool. And let's do some up here. I don't know if these will be covered or not because I'll be doing some layers, so we'll see what happens. Where else, where else? Huh. I think I'll leave that for now. I can always go back in and do more. I'm just not sure 
how the page will kind of form. So let me grab some paper towel. This is how I clean my brush, <laughs> at least for now, before I can get it to a sink and wash it. Okay, so let me put those stencils to the side. Oh, I love that, I love how that looks. A lot of this might be covered too, depending on where I put things, so we'll see. Okay, so let me put this back under here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is grab, I have a little um, thing of water here. Oh my gosh, y'all, I need more space. Okay, let me move all this. Grab my water. We are going to work on this napkin. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab my water, put my napkin to the side, and I am going to, with my water, Y'all have seen me do this before. I'm gonna, um, just with my water, circle the napkin where I want to cu cut it out, essentially. So here's the water. So this helps give you a guide on how to cut out your napkin. You, I mean, you could cut it out with a scissors if you want, but I like using the water because then you get this frayed edge along the side and that helps it blend onto your page as well. See, look at that. Easy peasy. Didn't have to worry about like ripping your letters or anything. So I'm thinking, let's pull those off. This is gonna go somewhere over here. Now, I also wanna take advantage of this um, border we have. So I am going to try to tear out this border the best I can. Just doing it in little pieces here. And I'm gonna put this around my page as well. A bit more water. Can y'all see what I'm doing here on the side? so hard working when you only have a certain amount of space on your on your desk y'all every time I'm working on a junk journal it turns into chaos on my desk <laughs> you should see it y'all it's just piled piled high with stuff different ribbons and fabric and paper and pictures and such Okay, so we will use this for something else. And here's the border, or at least some of it. Let's see, I don't know if it'll all fit. We might have to just tear that and we'll do it in pieces. Okay, so let's do the border first. So what I usually do is grab some of my gesso. Since I have this here, you can use Mod Podge, you can use watered down glue, you can use, and I'm almost out of this, ah, come on, clear gesso. I just use it since I gessoed my page. It's just easy. It's right here. I take a little bit of water and grab some gesso. And I'm going to do this in stages. So, and since this is ink that reacts with water, just be careful with it. I'm probably going to cover most of it up anyways, but it will show through this napkin because it's a, a light napkin. So I am going to stick it down. See, ooh, yeah, that's cool. You can kind of see the number through it. And once I, um, once I gesso over it, you'll even be able to see more. And so I do it in phases like this, and then I like press it down. And that actually helps with the bubbles, with the, um, oh man, I wanted these numbers to show. I might have to ink some more up. They kind of show through. We'll see what happens. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> okay, I'm going to tear this right there. And then we'll do another. So yeah, I'll do it in little pieces like this. And that helps get rid of all the um, bubbles, the creases, the what have you. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a border across the top. So I'm gonna add this one. Be careful around the ink. 
just gonna dab it right there. I love decoupaging napkins. It's just so easy. You get an image very, very quickly. I'm just gonna put a crease right there and I'm going to tear this. Let me grab some water. Make it easier. Okay. And then, shoot, do we want? Do we want a border down that way? Or should I leave it and just do one across the bottom? Let's do one across the bottom, we'll see what it looks like. I could always add it. Okay, so just kind of play around with it. Napkins are a little bit fragile, but they're also very resilient. If it falls apart, you can just piece it back together um, a lot of you have said that I've really helped you get into napkins, so that's exciting. Um, I love that. I love that I can introduce something new to y'all. Maybe something that you've been wanting to try but just haven't because you were nervous about it or whatever. Don't be nervous. Just jump in and try it because you'll never learn unless you try it. You just got to do it. Okay, what do y'all think? Should we just keep keep it on those three sides? Because like, let's see, if this goes here, that'll cover all that. I don't know, that looks kind of cool though too. Hmm. Covering up all my numbers. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna add it. I'm gonna add it. I'll just keep adding more y'all. We'll just keep adding more. So again, just do it in pieces like this and pat it down as you go. And it makes it a lot more um, whoop, manageable, I guess the word would be, you know, versus trying to like put all your glue down or whatever down and then trying to get the whole napkin down. Some people like doing that, like just put the whole glue and then set the whole napkin down. I just, this works best for me. Um, that I found it seems to be the best way for me to keep it manageable. Okay, so now y'all can see I have a ton of pieces sticking up. So I'm just gonna kind of go back in. And since this is white, my, my words will show through, so I'm not worried about that, especially when I go over it. But if you have a lot of pieces like this, you can just kind of tear it. Ooh, not that much. <laughs> just tear off the white if it's bugging you. I'm just gonna tear this little piece off if I can. Okay, where did my scissors go? Okay, I'm gonna cut this piece off here, the bottom. It's a little wet, but let's see what we can do. There we go. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is go over it. Y'all, let me remember where I put my scissors. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go over it with some watered down gesso. Now what this will do, this will help seal it in as well as make it more translucent and get rid of a lot more of those bubbles and creases and stuff. But again, I've, I've said this multiple times before, I love the texture that napkins give. So if you get these little bubbles or creases, that's part of the beauty of the napkin. See, now when you go over it, see, now all of a sudden the ink is showing through and you can actually see the two through this. Ooh, I love that. So yeah, when you go over it with your water down, oh, maybe we could see these numbers. Oh, a little bit, they're coming through. Ooh, oh my gosh, I'm looking out the window right now. It was literally sunny five minutes ago and now it's super windy and it just got really dark. Wow, y'all, crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, if my power goes out, y'all know what happened. <laughs> if it gets really windy like this, a lot of times my power will go out, especially since they've been doing some construction down the road. Um, they're building like a whole new complex of shops or whatever down I mean a couple blocks down and every once in a while they will hit um, a water main or an electric something or other <laughs> our power will go out or something it's like oh 
but ooh, see my my napkin just tore right there and you just kind of piece it together no biggie just piece it back together be a little surgeon a napkin surgeon see so look what happens when you put the um, gesso or the glue the watered down glue or whatever you're using over your napkin it not only seals it but it also makes it more translucent so you can see what's underneath so see so you don't have to worry about losing your words I gotta put some under here let me make sure my in screen for you okay good make sure you can all see Ooh, I am running out of here. I'm gonna have to add, get some more. Just a little tad more. Let's see if I can scrape up whatever I got here. Ooh, just made it, but I got this other part of the napkin that I gotta do, so I'm gonna still have to get some more. Okay, let's squeeze a little bit more out. I am definitely gonna have to get to the store and get a little bit more of this. So I got this from Michael's. Um, and it literally, it lasted me a long time, probably a year, um, this tube. So it's definitely, you know, I guess it just depends how much gesso you use. I don't use it too much, but I do use it to prep my pages and all, you know, and to do my napkins and such. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So I can see my numbers through. Oh, I love it. Love it. It worked out better than I thought, the nines up there. Okay, so I'm thinking of putting that there. So... Let's kind of place our things and we'll see where everything is gonna go while this is drying a little. I might have to dry it a little as well. So if that goes like there. This is gonna be, I'm gonna make this, um, I'm thinking, I have this little card too. So I'm thinking if I make this kind of like a tuck spot, so if I glue just this part down, this can be my prayer. I'm gonna write something about my blessings on the front and back, and then I can tuck that in. So then I have always remember here, and this will be glued. I can actually probably glue it. Whoop. Yes, this is what's gonna happen if I don't dry this. I can glue this like down here even a little bit further. Okay. Okay, so in the meantime, let's put this on quickly, and then I'll dry this and then we can move on. So since this is, uh, you know, kind of something just like this, I can just kind of put the whole thing down and press it down. And then any pieces that I need extra, I can just press down like that. Okay, now I'm gonna go back. Be careful around this ink because it is water activated. If you're using distress inks, um, the water will smear your ink. So if you have ink around where you're working, be careful. Always work from the middle out instead of from the out in because you'll pull all that in. Work from the middle out. That's my other little tip for working with napkins, middle out. But look at that. The whole napkin just really fades into the background and all you see is the the words. I love that. Okay. And anytime you're working with gesso, always put your uh, brush right in water just because the gesso will harden on your brush pretty quickly. Okay. So I'm going to move all this and I am going to dry this quickly and then we can move on. So I'm going to use my heating tool. kind of like all fall colors as well. I wasn't expecting it to be, but the napkin and the colors just kind of are conducive to it. And we're in fall right now here. I know some of you have snow and you're already in winter. Oh my gosh, couldn't handle that. But um, we are enjoying our fall weather. I was out in shorts the other day in just a short sleeve shirt and it was just perfect weather. It's just cool enough. You know, warm enough for me to be warm, but cool enough for not to, for me to be sweating like I usually am. Oop, this part got all. I 
yeah, this is my favorite time of year for sure. Okay, what will also help is if you pick your page up so air can like kind of flow through it and if you can do the back of the page, that also helps because then you're getting the back of the napkins. So that's an, if you're finding that your, your page isn't drying as quick as you'd like, flip it over and do the back as well. That way you're hitting it from both sides. Sorry y'all, I know I'm off camera here, but my heating tool is plugged into the wall over here and this is as far as it'll go. So I gotta just make do until I can get an extension board or something. And I can't move anything right now because my desk is in chaos. Okay, almost there. There's a few damp spots yet. So I just want to make sure. You really can't do anything over the napkins unless they're perfectly dry. Now people have asked me, can you stick stickers on these napkins? Can you stencil on these? Yes, you can do it all. You just might have um, some issues. Um, every once in a while, if I'm doing stickers on napkins, I might have to add glue to the back of my stickers to make sure it sticks to the napkins. Um, but you can stencil over this. You can paint over it. Um, you know, write over it. Do whatever. But with um, sticking things to the napkins, you might have an issue. So you might just have to add some glue to it. But if you add glue, it that shouldn't. That should be fine. So, so you know, hopefully that should be fine. <laughs> okay, so it's pretty dry. There are a few damp spots I'm feeling, but um, if this crinkliness bothers you, by the time you close your Bible and it sits for a while, or you can put some books on this, it'll flatten it out. Some people have ironed their pages as well with like a little craft iron, just iron it out. I actually like the crinkle because it gives it a little bit more texture, but most of the time, after a while of your Bible being closed, it flattens it out anyways. So, ooh, this part's a little wet right here, and I just ripped that part. Well, let's rip that part off. <laughs> okay, a little wet. I gotta be careful. Okay, so let's see. Let's get all these little pictures that I had. So I'm thinking, let's just set this up. This little leaf can kind of like be peeking out. Oh, let's see. Maybe this guy can come up here. Is that all I had? I thought I had. Maybe that is all I have for that. And then. I like that blessings okay and then this was gonna tuck behind there okay so I'm gonna grab my glue and I am going to try to keep all this together I'm gonna glue all that and stick it <laughs> this is how I do it in clumps so I remember where everything goes and I didn't put glue on this part because I didn't want it to be stuck to the page yet. I'll turn this a little bit. I like those numbers sticking out. Let's add this one. Let's see, how do we want this guy? Maybe we want him down here. Do we want him down here? I don't know. We'll put him down there. That's where he's going. Okay. And if any of you know of a great way to stick these <laughs> without, I mean, I know if I had, I have a sticker machine and I could um, run this through the sticker machine and then it gives, it gives like tackiness to the other side. It gives it, so it's like makes it a sticker. I guess I should probably get more proficient with my sticker machine and just kind of do this. It's in the garage. I need to kind of get it out and um, I was gifted it and it's been sitting in there. I need to work on that and get it. But if any of you know of a better way <laughs> of, let's see, if this is gonna be like that, we'll have it like this. Blessings. 
for little cutouts like that. The only way I know is just glue it down and then take your paper towel and like dab up all the glue. Okay, so this is going, oh, I'm gonna miss my little seven. I guess I could put this here. Mm. Let's see. I'm trying to see if where we would like this. Actually, if we stick it like that, we have this little. coming out. Hmm. Maybe like that. And then this would fit like that in there. What do y'all think? I want the I want the always remember to be sticking out. Or we could have it going this way. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. want some of these numbers to show. I guess the seven is gonna get hidden and the eight, well, he's right there, so. And this will kind of stick in like that. Or I could have it like that. Yeah, I'm gonna put it right there. Okay, I'm gonna hold it. Ooh. Okay, I'm grab this. This part's gonna get glued down. That's the thing, sometimes you'll do all that work, all your stenciling and what have you, and then you end up covering it all at the end, but some of it peeks out. Okay, so I am going to glue, I wanna make sure I remember where I'm at here. Because if I move it, I'll forget. So all I'm doing is putting some glue right along the edges here. And I'm sticking that down. And I'm going to fold this over and put some glue just along this edge right here. And stick this down. So this part will be up. So that makes it like a little tuck spot. See? A little tuck spot like that. So you can put your own little notes, your own little prayers, or what have you in there. You can count your blessings. So I'm going to write something here off camera and then tuck that in there. Okay. Okay, the other thing I had is this little tag. I was gonna put it up here. I could put it here and just attach it with a paper clip. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna grab my Distress Ink and my little dauber here. And I'm just gonna ink up these edges here to make them pop instead of having that stark white along the edge. That's it, easy peasy. And then I have these three uh, ribbons. They're like sheer ribbons. This is an orange, it's not sheer, but I thought that would go good with the page and then this is like that color, so I have all these colors. Where did I put my scissors? Okay, told y'all not to let me forget. Um, so I'm just going to cut off about that much of each one. And then we're gonna put it through this hole. So I'm just gonna stack them up like this and then fold them over like this and stick them through the hole, hopefully easily. Okay, and then so then you have this loop here that has gone through your hole. You just take all your little end pieces here and pull them or stick them through this loop. And then pull. And you can kind of fiddle with them and make them whichever way you want. Which one is this sticking up here? And then you can have long or short. I am just gonna cut these on an angle like this, 
cut this one on an angle. Then you just get like this little tuft of different colored ribbons at the top. Like I said, you could fiddle with them and like, you know, separate the colors if you want them separate. Just throw this part out. Oh, you know what I was gonna do? I think I was gonna, sten I was gonna see if I could stencil on this. This is a little shiny, but I'm gonna see if I could stencil some of these numbers on this as well. Let's see, where'd my stencil go? So I wanted to kind of do it at an angle here. Oh, cool. Yeah, that worked. It's probably gonna have to dry, so be careful you don't touch it. If anytime you are putting ink on like something a little bit shinier, like a tag or something, you have to let it dry, don't touch it. So I'm gonna let that. And then so then that's gonna stick right up here. So it's like counting your blessings. So there we go. There's our page. So what I'm going to do off camera is right on here, they'll always remember, I'm gonna probably write um, just a thankful prayer, counting my blessings and just remembering all the things that God has done for me, maybe just this year, even though this year seemed like a crazy year, he has blessed us um, in many, many ways. And I'm sure he has you too. So I hope you all do count your blessings and just always remember, always remember the remembrance of grace that God has poured out into your life. Because on those days that you feel like, you know, oh my gosh, nothing good is going on or whatever, you know, I bet there's a lot more good going on than you realize or that, you know, you're even noticing. So, you know, sometimes when you keep like a gratitude journal or something like that, it really helps you to remember. So, Anyways, y'all, I hope you have a fun day counting your blessings, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.